everyone, welcome to another M365 video SharePoint short with David Warner. Today we're going to continue talking about how to combine SharePoint framework and dynamic styles for our CSS. In this part two video of the series, we're going to focus on how we can dynamically bundle and optimize our styles. We're going to begin by looking at an overview of the bundling benefits and why we would want to bundle and how we can optimize them. And then we're going to jump directly into the demos. We're first going to see how we can preserve some non-hashed class names within our CSS styles for uses within, for example, list formatting or other web parts or other extensions. We're going to see how we can optimize the bundling of our styles by splitting them into multiple JavaScript bundles. And then we're going to see how to dynamically load each of those bundles at runtime so that our page is as performant as possible when using our style solution. Now the demos in this part two video are going to build upon those that we started with in part one. They're going to build on the fundamentals that we learned there. So if you haven't already watched that, I highly encourage you go back to see exactly how we set up the demos that we'll be using in this video. Now there are many benefits of using this strategy to optimize our style bundling and then dynamically loading those bundles at runtime. A couple are listed here. The first is that we can create a collection of isolated styles. So within our SharePoint framework solution, we can create separation of our styles. Maybe we have a separation of styles for doing one thing or the other. In the demos, we'll see how we have a collection of styles for shadows and a collection of styles for glows on hover events of our buttons. The second is performance improvement. By creating separate bundles of our SharePoint framework solution styles, we're able to then import them dynamically only when being used. So if we're not using shadows and we only want to use glows, we can import only the shadows. And we'll see exactly how to do that in the demo. Let's begin the demo by reviewing the style assets that we'll be working with. In our styles folder, we've got two module files. One is for glows and one is for shadows. They're similar to what we used in the first video. They simply have some basic names that we would like to see hashed, but then we've got some hover styles that are being applied here that we would like to ensure are not hashed when we generate our JavaScript bundles. This is so that we can use this exact name inside of a list view format that we'll see later in the demo. So if we were to import these two style files using the methods that we saw in the previous video, our class names such as we see here, PNP button hover style would be hashed, means that it would be appended at the end of the name with a unique variable or string to make sure it's unique and it doesn't collide with any other styles being loaded on the page. So let's go ahead and update our TypeScript file to do the import. We'll come over to our TypeScript, we'll go ahead and paste the import statements, and we'll go ahead and select save. Now once the packaging and bundling of these styles has been included, we can go ahead and open up our application customizer JS bundle file, and we can do a search on our PNP button hover style class name. We can see here for shadows, it has now been hashed. We've got that uh, dynamic value being added to the end of it. If we go ahead and search again, we can see it's also done the exact same thing for glows. It also has a unique value being appended to the end of it. What we would like to see happen is we would like to see it preserved exactly as we've defined it in our class file. To do this within our styles is actually pretty simple. There's what's called a global flag that we can wrap our styles here within our SAS file. So we're gonna go ahead and click right there and it's colon global, open curly brace, and then you wrap all of those in a global flag. So we see we've wrapped all of these classes right here in a global flag. We wanna go ahead and do the exact same thing on our uh, glows, so we'll go ahead and come into our glows style file, paste that in, we'll close it, we'll save it, and now once our bundle has been uh, regenerated, we'll see and open that and see how our class names have been preserved. We'll go ahead and open our bundle and we'll do a search on PNP. Now we can see it's taken us to our styles and we can see there's no more hashing being applied to these style names. So the next step for us in this demo is we only want to load glows or shadows. For purpose of this demo, the PNP button hover style is the same name whether it's a glow or a shadow. We only want to load one at a time and it's used as a hover state when we hover over a button as we'll see inside of a list formatting definition. Let's close our bundled JavaScript file and let's go back to our primary TypeScript file. And we want to go ahead and delete the import statements right there. 
To accomplish the loading dynamically of each of those styles individually, each of this glow or shadows style module file individually, we're going to use a property in our extension. We've created one here called included styles. And so if we go into our init, we're gonna paste in some code that'll handle that for us. It's simply using an if statement. It's looking to see if the property that's being supplied is button shadows or button glows. And then we're doing an import of the actual style right here. We can see though there's being an error thrown on the import statement. So if we hover over it, it lets us know that it can only be used in a namespace or module. So this is not the exact import statement that we would like to make here. We actually wanna change it to be an import TypeScript expression. So if we change it to doing a parenthesis here, and we'll wrap this in a parenthesis as well. What this is going to allow us to do is actually split each of these modules into a separate JS bundled file. Whereas right now, when we've used the previous import statement, it's all bundled into this individual JavaScript single file. Now though, when we select save, it'll actually separate each of these modules into a separate file. So in just a moment, I'm going to select Control S to save. But when I do that, pay attention to the dist folder right over here. What we're going to find is that it's going to generate some additional files for us. So we'll go ahead and select save. The generator, the gulp file is going through, Webpack is analyzing the import statements that we've made down here inside of our init. And when it's completed its packing, we can see now it's actually generated additional files right here. Let's take a look at what's in those files. By using the TypeScript import expression, as we see here on line 31 and 35, it's actually separated out the results of that style file into their own individual JavaScript bundled files. So we can see here there's actually the PNP button hover style there, as well as PNP button here. So each one of those represents a style for the shadow or the glow. So what's super cool, if we go back to our TypeScript file, we'll close our bundles, is that now each of those individual style bundles can be loaded into our browser one at a time. When we load this on a browser using the query string parameter that allows us to test our extension in development, we can define our included styles property will be either button shadows or button glows. And now instead of importing a large single JavaScript bundle file that includes styles for both glow and shadows, it's only gonna load one or the other. Let's jump over to the browser and see what that looks like. We're here in my browser in my SharePoint Online tenant. We're looking at a collection of PNP community members uh, using a view formatting definition that I've created to make it look stylistic. What we would like to have happen is when I hover over this button, we will see one of those two effects or styles, shadows or glows, uh, being displayed for us. And I've applied that class name right here in my view formatting definition already. So we know it's applied, we just simply haven't loaded the extension. So let's take a look at how we can do that. We'll go ahead and save and we'll close our view formatting definition. Now, since I've already got that solution we've been looking at running on my local machine using gulp serve, I can simply come into the URL string and paste in the parameter needed to load that directly from my machine and my local host. Now we can see I've got the included styles property. I'm including button shadows. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and it's gonna prompt me to allow debug scripts and now we should see the shadow effect being applied when I hover. In fact, we do. If I go ahead and bring up the developer toolbar, we go to network and I go to local host and refresh again, we'll see that just one of those style bundles will be loaded. Go ahead and click on JS and there it is, 0.0. .0. We see our application customizer and our manifest. So we see that only one of them has loaded at a time. So now we can take it a step further and make a change to the query string we're using. We'll go ahead and click in the URL bar and we'll go ahead and change button shadows to button glows. And we'll hit enter. It's gonna ask us to allow the debug scripts. We'll hit load. And now we see instead of 0.0, .0 loading, we see 1.1 has loaded. And if we hover over the button, 
Well, now we see the glow effect. Certainly, this has been a pretty simple example of how we could split out and optimize our style bundles. And we're just using one use case, a hover effect on a button for a shadow or a glow. But the strategy could definitely be applied to a more complex scenario. In this example, we were simply using a hover state, like we see right there, for a glow or a shadow. But using other pseudo attributes such as clicked or checked or active, or simply using other CSS techniques like CSS3 animations, we could get much more robust with our use case. Hope you found this video useful today on how you can take advantage of optimizing your style bundles and dynamically loading them at runtime. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions and visit my blog. Thanks again.